So hello and welcome to this uh, course machine fault diagnosis and signal processing. Today's topic is multiplane dynamic rotor balancing and uh, we are going to see a case study. So in the last lecture or in the last video, uh, we have seen uh, a single plane static rotor balancing case study. So in today's uh, session, uh, we will be seeing the multiplane dynamic rotor balancing case study. Uh, this is a B major project static and dynamic balancing of rotating machinery in the field uh, for the session 2016-17. Now first we will see the introduction or why a multiplane balancing is required or what is multiplane rotor. So a two plane dynamic balancing is required for a rotor whose length is considerable as compared to the diameter of the rotor. When the diameter of the rotor is uh, very, very large as compared to the, uh, the length of the rotor is very, very large as compared to the diameter. So for such rotor, uh, you cannot apply a, a single plane balancing or a static balancing because uh, at uh, both the ends of the uh, rotor, a couple is developed and uh, such uh, problems are to be handled dynamically rather than uh, statically. So this is uh, a multiplane balancing uh, method. Uh, such a requirement is also relevant to a rotors whose diameters vary along their lengths such as in the turbines. So in the turbines uh, we can see that uh, during the span of the rotor the diameter uh, is continuously varying. So such rotors are also balanced by using multiplane balancing method. The method of dynamic balancing are grouped into two categories. Uh, uh, first is uh, with uh, phase angle measurement and without phase angle measurement. Now uh, with phase angle measurement we, we need to calculate the phase angle along with uh, the vibration amplitudes at the support bearing. But uh, phase angle mes measurement uh, requires a high end instrumentation, uh, different instruments are required for measuring the phase angle and the correct correctness of the phase angle is also a, a point of discussion because uh, the correct angle would come only when the speed is constant. But in most of the cases, uh, the speed of uh, the component or speed of a motor is not constant. Why, why it is not constant? Because uh, the electrical supply, uh, particularly in India, uh, the electrical supply uh, does not have a constant frequency and uh, there are fluctuations in the voltage and because of those uh, voltage fluctuations, the speed of the motor or the speed of uh, the component is also fluctuating. And that is why the correct uh, phase angle measurement is also very, very difficult uh, uh, under these circumstances. So that is why uh, too much reliance on the phase angle measurement sometimes uh, would not be uh, recommended. So instead, uh, this particular uh, case study is based on without phase angle measurement. That means uh, there are no requirement of high end instrumentation for measuring the phase angle separately. Uh, this session presents the balancing of two plane rotor in which the rotor is balanced by observing the vibration amplitude at the support bearings and no phase angle measurement is required. So we will see uh, how uh, the multiplane rotor is balanced. So for this, uh, we have used this uh, experimental setup. Uh, here, this is a prime mover and the power is transmitted from prime mover to a driven shaft. Now this driven shaft is supported at uh, two places by uh, this uh, pedestal bearings. Uh, on this shaft, uh, two rotors are installed at some distance. Okay. So here you can see that there are two rotors and these rotors uh, have uh, uh, holes throughout its periphery so that we can add, we, first we can imbalance the rotor and then we can, 
do the trial runs and calculate the corrective weight and install the corrective weight at the periphery and get the rotor balanced. So uh, this is the experimental setup. Now here you can see that uh, to measure the vibrations uh, at the support bearing an accelerometer has been installed on the bearing and this accelerometer is connected to the, the, uh, to the data acquisition system uh, which is a national instrument uh, based uh, uh, data acquisition system uh, and then uh, this uh, DAQ system is connected to a LabVIEW software and uh, on the LabVIEW software you can analyze the signal in time domain and frequency domain uh, plots. So this is uh, all about the experimental setup. Now uh, the algorithm for calculating the corrective balancing weights and uh, angle. So here uh, we can see that there are two rotors. Uh, this rotor, the right hand side rotor is called drive end rotor because this is uh, near to the drive end whereas the other rotor is non drive end rotor. So here uh, the individual corrective angles and corrective weights are calculated for uh, the drive end uh, rotor and non drive end rotor and then uh, the final corrective angles are calculated. So first uh, by using uh, a three circle method, uh, so those uh, who do not know what the three circle method is, uh, kindly go to the previous video of uh, static rotor balancing. There. Uh, I have explained the, the uh, three circle method on a pol polar plot in very very detail. Uh, so the same method uh, will be applied and uh, uh, the corrective weights and corrective angles are calculated by three, three, uh, three circle method. Uh, so this is the corrective angle and corrective weight for drive end bearing. This is corrective weight and corrective angle for non drive end bearing. Now, uh, now um, these are individual uh, corrective weights and angles. Now, how to implement it on the rotor? So for that, uh, uh, if uh, weight one is greater than weight two, uh, then we will subtract. W1 minus W2 and if it is not then it is W2 minus W1 and in this way we have calculated the final corrective weight. Similarly in case of angles if uh, the theta1 is less than uh, 180 degree then it is theta1 minus theta2 and if uh, the theta2 is uh, less than 180 degree then it will be theta1 minus theta2 and if it is not then uh, if theta 1 is less than theta 2 then it will be theta 1 minus theta 2 otherwise it will be theta 2 minus theta 1. So depending upon their values uh, uh, these uh, corrective angles and corrective weights are calculated and uh, this is the entire algorithm for finding the corrective weights and corrective angles. Now. Uh, we have conducted the experimentation. Uh, this is this particular table is vibration amplitudes with trial weight of 15 gram. So here we have deliberately uh, put a trial weight of 15 gram at the drive end bearing first. Uh, first, without any trial weight, we have find out uh, the vibration amplitudes at the drive end and non drive end bearing. Then we put the trial weight at the 0 degree, measure the vibrations, then put the trial weight at 120 degree, uh, take out from 0 degree, put it at 120 degree and measure the vibrations and then take out from 120 degree, put it at 240 degree and measure the vibrations. In the same way, uh, we have uh, put the trial weight of 15 gram at a uh, non drive end rotor also. So this uh, so this is a non drive end uh, rotor uh, same trial weight uh, is put at 0 degree 
120 degree and 240 degree and measure the vibrations at bearing A and bearing B. Now uh, from these vibrations uh, uh, we have used uh, three circle methods method uh, on the polar plot and uh, the this uh, this is a graphical method this this three circle method is a graphical method in the previous video uh, i have uh, manually drawn the three circles on the polar plot but uh, the same uh, polar plot uh, can be programmed by using a labview software so here uh, a labview program is uh, developed uh, as per the algorithm and uh, calculated the corrective weights and angles. Now these are the final calculated corrective weights and angles for drive end bearing. Uh, it is 138.69 grams at 261 degrees, uh, 261 degree angle and for bearing B it is 129.42 grams at 52 degrees. Similarly, for non-drive end bearing, these are the uh, magnitude of the corrective weight and positions and as per the algorithm, the final uh, corrective weight and corrective angles are calculated and then those corrective weights and angles are installed on the rotor and then, uh, then uh, again check the vibrations whether they have reduced or not. So the final conclusion from uh, this particular uh, project is that this method is free from phase angle measurement. So only requires measurement of vibration amplitude. So <coughs> this uh, particular uh, method is free from phase angle measurement that means no high end instrumentation is required, uh, no dependence on the constant speed uh, even if uh, the speed fluctuates uh, this method is not hampered because of the speed fluctuations no high end instrumentation is required however uh, the only drawback of this method is that it takes uh, 4 plus 3 7 runs are required whereas in phase angle measurement uh, you can balance the rotor in three trials only. So lesser the number of trials, lesser uh, the time period for the balancing, lesser the man machine material cost. Uh, so that may be the drawback of uh, uh, without phase angle measurement method, but uh, uh, no high end instrumentation is required that is the beauty of this method. The results for the two plane rotor balancing method using ASM that is amplitude subtraction method showed the percentage reduction in the vibration amplitude of 43 percent and 73, 70 percent for the drive end and non drive end bearings. So whatever the uh, corrective weights and angles that we have calculated uh, then we put that corrective weights and corrective angles on the rotor and uh, we have found the reduction in the amplitude uh, by about 43 and 70 percent at the drive end and non drive end bearings respectively. So the average uh, percentage reduction in the machine vibrations are about 57 uh, percent. Okay. So uh, this shows the effectiveness of this particular method and uh, by using those methods uh, we can balance a multiplane rotors or the rotors whose span is very very large as compared to the diameter such as turbines and uh, we can uh, uh, increase the life of the component, life of the machine and uh, we can reduce the uh, plant downtime. Okay. So that is it from uh, this uh, session. In the next session, we will see some other machine fault in very, very detail. So, thank you.